You walk in at 8.30 in the morning, you clock in, and you're just negative, negative, negative barrage, making you feel this friggin' big every single day. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the video. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, a very, very long time. I worked at GameStop for almost 20 years. And when I started there, it was not GameStop. It was EB Games and uh, a very, very different company. Before we get into it, I want to make things crystal clear. This is my experience with GameStop. I just feel like I need to talk about it because it was some of the funnest moments of my life, but definitely a lot of trauma and a lot of terrible, terrible things came from it. I, like you, am a gamer, collector, toy enthusiast, comic book collector, so on and so forth. I knew that I wanted to work in a game store pretty much my whole life that's what i wanted to do i got a job uh canadian franchise called microplay in the around 94 95 just a great great independent owned video game store that really uh dealt with rentals dealt with sales um more importantly dealt with customers and i loved talking about video games with customers and i don't remember the exact year but somewhere in the early 90s eb games came to canada they never they never used to be in canada but they came to canada and very quickly that was the end of microplay over time fast forward a few years later I applied to EB Games a few times, uh, no results. I was working um, at Pizza Hut at the time for a good five years. Knew that I needed to do something different, and I was going to go for what I thought was my dream. <laughs> you laugh at me, that's fine. But I wanted to at least work at... EB Games. So I applied and finally I got an interview with the busiest store in our city with their manager. Oh my God, I was so excited. This was 2003. Here we go. It's 2003. I have probably a week before the big interview. I am so crazy excited and I'm determined, determined to get this job at EB Games. I have to get this job. I was nervous, but I think it went well. I uh, did a follow-up call, found out that it was just between me and another guy, but I got the job. Hallelujah. I was so excited. Guys, it wasn't all bad. I started in September of 2003 in the busiest store in our district, which was in the busiest mall at the time in the district, and I was a part-timer. Uh, quickly moved up to key holder, which you're responsible for opening and closing the store. You don't get any other benefits or raises. It's just, you're showing your initiative to the company. You're showing, Hey, I want more responsibility because I want to move up the corporate ladder. That's what you're showing them. Other stores needed shifts filled in the city. Hey, Jay's your guy. No problem. I'll come in anytime. Finally, 2006, I would say, yeah, a good three years later, I get promoted to assistant manager. Uh, kept going, kept going, ground that out for a few years. Got manager in 2009. I was put into what's called a dead mall. The the, the mall, it, to say it was dying. Um, anyone who knows Westmount Mall knows exactly what I'm talking about. That mall was freaking dead. I believe GameStop acquired EB Games in 2005. I think that's the year. That's when things started to change. That's when warranties started to come in. Uh, Pre-orders were pushed. Our edge cards were pushed more. And let me just say this, okay? The upselling of items in a retail capacity, I get. I totally understand, okay? So keep that in mind as we go forward. Now, I've had quite a few bosses above me, you know, my whole working career. And I understand how that works. Um, 
but the experiences that I had the last five years were some of the most brutal and shocking I've ever experienced. First off, you have all these stats that you have to be accountable for as a store manager, which makes sense. I can't remember how many. There was probably nine or ten at least that you had to have the company average or above every single day, which is impossible, impossible to do. These include warranties that you have to sell on Blu-ray discs and Switch games and other cartridge-based games. You have to sell warranties on them. It, I mean, it made sense during the 360 DVD days, but in those days, if they had the ring around them, we weren't supposed to take the back anyway. So what are we doing? doesn't matter. We got to push them. You got to push them as uncomfortable as all of us were. And let me tell you something. We all were uncomfortable selling these warranties. We tried. We tried. We had to get X percentage. And I'm not going to disclose any numbers about the company, okay? That's not what this is about. So we had to maintain this average. Hardly any stores ever got it. Just on that one metric, which was warranties for the games. So every single morning I would come in, you are just, your inbox... You boot up the computer, the inbox, and the POS is just littered with emails from your district manager telling you how many times you have failed, how many times you have done the company wrong. What are you going to do to correct it? I need two or three paragraphs to uh, explain how you're going to do it. I need best practices every single day. And the one or two days that my store actually completed this crazy laundry list of demands. Great work. And once 9 o'clock hits at night, the doors close, you do it all again tomorrow. I felt like we were really set up to lose. I didn't feel like we had support. I didn't feel like we really had anyone we could reach out and talk to, although I did with my boss many times, with his boss, and with his boss's boss, boss, I reached out to. And they heard me, but they didn't listen. I had lots of great ideas, which I might as well have just been talking to the wall uh, about retro games and, you know, why, why don't we sell old gen stuff? There's plenty of room. How about instead of some of this crap that we sell, which was, you know, they started bringing in toys and stuff like that, but it wasn't the right toys. But a lot of the decisions made to bring in the stuff that was not video games made no sense to all of us, okay? Not just me, to all of us. And we would talk about it, all us managers, all the staff, we would talk about it all the time. Why are we carrying Captain America stuffed dog toy shield things that are like $14.99. I, I, I don't understand why. Here's a perfect example of a situation that you cannot win. PlayStation 5 controllers in Canada are $89. They're behind the counter. They're back here so that the customers can't grab them and some customers can't stick them in their coat and walk away with them. Okay. That's why they're back here. But our boss will come in and say, no, no, these customers need to be able to handle the controller and stuff like that. They need to be able to see it, which I never understood, right? Here it is. This is, this is the controller. I don't know what you need, need to see. Okay, so we take them from behind the counter, put them on the sales floor. What happens? Well, they start to grow legs and walk away. Now, whose fault is that? Mine. So we lose three controllers in a week, right? Oh, well, why weren't you engaging on the sales floor? Well, I wasn't engaging on the sales floor because you cut all our hours back and I have no staff to work. So it's just me by myself in a strip store for more than half the day, which means you can't go to the washroom because you're not supposed to lock the door and put a sign on the door. Keep in mind, again, at this point, I was in a strip mall and not in the mall. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but this was my final store. So you can't go to the washroom and you can't put a sign, a handwritten sign on the door that says, be back in five minutes, because that just looks bad. So you can't go to the washroom. Okay, so 
who's going to ring in the customers? Well, me. Well, how am I supposed to ring in the customers if I have to be on the floor and then be there and then you're set up to fail? See, to me, the experience at GameStop, it wasn't even the customers. I enjoyed talking to the customers about video games. You try to talk about a game, you try to get excited about it, which they encourage you. And then, oh, you're taking too much time with customers. It's just like, no matter what you do, it's wrong. Think about that. Think about what that does to you mentally day after day for years. Well, I would say a decade and a half at least. Like I said, it wasn't always super bad like this. It started to get bad around, I would say, 2007 is when I started to notice the, the company really changing. But everything you do is wrong and you can't explain yourself because they don't want to listen. And on top of that, it's like, okay, your warranty numbers, Jay, are low. How are you going to improve them? Uh, okay, so I tell them how I'm going to improve them, try to implement them. Okay, that doesn't work all the time. It works sometimes, but all the time, not good enough. Okay, well, then how about you teach me how to sell them? Well, you see, that position just doesn't exist at GameStop. You see, you have to figure out everything on your own. It's all up to you. How crazy is that they don't have a department with these stats that are literally <laughs> making all the margin for the company because these warranties are just pure it's pure profit all this stuff that is so important to them they don't have at least one guy or gal going around to train us managers then we could train our staff there isn't a position that does that it's just like well figure it out on your own and the constant threat of being written up if your numbers don't approve is I, I worked hard. I wanted to succeed. The last store I was in was dead. It was a dead, failing store. All I kept hearing about, oh, if you don't pull your numbers up, they're not going to uh, renew the lease. And all I could think of was, oh, my God, I'm going to be out of a job. That, that stress on someone that's not normal. That's just, that's a small little section of why I left. Ultimately, it was, you guessed it, 2020, uh, the pandemic and the way we were treated and the way we were handled uh, as a, a, a district manager, an area manager in charge of multiple stores, not me, my bosses. It is your responsibility to take care of your people and to listen to them regardless of your personal beliefs, correct? That's not the case. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a cold. Oh, it's nothing. Don't, don't worry about it. You got to do this. Well, our province says you're not allowed to take cash. You're not allowed to take trade-ins. Um, when games get traded in, they have to sign off on them. We're not supposed to do that. Oh, do it anyway. Do it anyway. I don't feel comfortable taking cash. Doesn't matter. You have to do it anyway. This was when mentally I really, really started to break down. We were forced to like let customers in a little bit during the lockdown, a little bit into the doorway to peek around, even though it was a strict lockdown from the government. We were told that customers could open the door and come in and take a peek around. So we're supposed to build displays around our doorway. And then it was curbside only, but if they wanted to shop more, they could just come a couple feet into the door and look around. I'm just like, what is going on here? This is how much our safety meant. I'd had enough of goals that were ridiculous that just my store wasn't achieving, but everyone else in the district, save for maybe one store, and we're talking like... 12, 13 stores. I, I was I was tired of it. I was tired of feeling like a failure. I was tired of feeling like a loser. I was tired of feeling like everything that I did was wrong. You walk in at 8.30 in the morning, you clock in, and you're just negative, negative, negative barrage, making you feel this friggin' big every single day. As a manager, I couldn't hire my own staff. Disciplining people didn't mean anything. So consequently, 
people just did whatever they wanted. Didn't matter. And I and I mean that. People literally did whatever they wanted. I couldn't do anything about it. I feel like I had no control over my own store, and I didn't. I didn't get a raise for four years. The last four years I was there, I did not get a raise. I remember it was around around Christmas when I decided to uh when I decided to leave. It was hard, man. It was hard. I I, I wrestled with it for a long time. And I, I, I remember standing there behind the counter and I had a one other staff member with me and i remember we had to do counts we had to count the store we had to do this every quarter um and we had to start counting getting ready because you had like two more weeks and then that was up and you had to of course show that you counted the store which i get i remember just turning to my associate meaning like i can't i physically can't do this anymore being a 10 or 20 year employee of gamestop is not a good thing. They don't see it as a good thing. We were called complacent. We were called lazy. My very last day after I gave my two weeks, my boss, this is something I'll never forget, didn't even come in to say goodbye. Nothing. After almost 20 years with the company, didn't even come in. Man, that's when you you really just step back and look at your life and you're like, my God, man, I just dedicated, you know, 20 years to this company and it's, you feel this big, like you're, you're really replaceable, which I was. There's so much more that I could talk about. Maybe another time, this is what I had to get off my chest, what I've been wanting to get off my chest for a few years i left there in 2021 by the way um and it was the best decision i ever made it really was if you guys have been in the same position not just with gamestop but with any retail please let me know in the comments below i love to talk about this stuff with you i think um retail workers mentally really get really get abused we really do um and a lot of times it's not from customers in my experience most of the time it was from you know your your bosses and people that you're supposed to look up to thanks for listening guys as always if you like the video don't forget to throw a thumbs up and please consider subscribing we would love to have you Whew. i felt like that was a therapy session I need a coffee. <laughs> Until next time, my friends, take care.